So what is the current situation in terms of management of this disease in Florida right now? Currently, the most reliable management technique is the use of fungicides. And the list of fungicides to control colitotrichum crown rot is actually short. The growers use Captain as a protectant fungicide or the strawberrylins as a curative fungicide. Examples of, strawber of strawberrylins used for colitotrichum crown rot management are paraclostrobin and azoxystrobin. Um, and azoxystrobin is a compound that's included in a bound. That's one example of it. Okay. And uh, how you think your research will help growers to manage this disease better in Florida? What we've been testing is new fungus, actually not new fungicides, we're testing fungicides that are currently in use for okay. controlling anthracnose and botrytis root rot to see if other fungicides are able to control, to also control colitotrum crown rot. And we've been testing uh, the SDHI fungicides. They are the succinate dehydrogenase inhibitors. We, why did we decide to test this? Is because in 2016 we found there is resistance of Colotrichum glosperioides to azoxystrobin. So we've been looking for alternatives to to this fungicide in the field. Um, here is a, a couple of examples of. The, the fungicide we've been the fungicides we've been using we have Aprovia, Kenja, uh, Fontalis, Luna, Luna Tranquility. So how is your research going on? How are you doing your research in the field? We planted strawberries. We have strawberries from Cultivar Festival. Okay. As I showed you before, and we plant them the same time as the growers planted in the field. We planted this year in the beginning of October okay. and it's it, this is the second year that we're repeating the experiment here in the Gulf Coast Research and Education Center. We inoculate the plants with the Colototrichum glosperioides. We have a mix of four isolates okay. that we use in our cultivar trials also and in our field and we inoculated one month after we planted. So we plant them, we establish with overhead irrigation exactly the way the growers do, and we inoculate them with Colotoshkin glosperiatus a month later. Two, either two days before inoculation or one day after inoculation, we spray with the fungicides because we want to see if the fungicides are actually curative or protectant. Okay. If they're going to work before the pathogen actually there, infects or the plant, after? or at, before or after, after. they infect the plants. Okay. So we started collecting mortality data, wilting and mortality data, symptoms, symptoms, seeing symptoms in the plant. So that how many days after inoculation? Two, two weeks. Uh, two weeks after inoculation. Okay. And from that on, we collect data every week until the end of the. And you're spraying different fungicides that you're testing there. We only spray fungicides once. Again, okay, but different different fungicides. Different fungicides. Yeah. Okay. So how are you research? They're all from the same group of okay. fungicides. The SDHIs, they have different active ingredients. But they're, they're, they have different active ingredients. So how do you think your research will help Florida growers to manage this disease? So we have promising results. Okay. There are That's a couple of fungicides that actually work. Mm -hmm. there, there, is, uh, there is some fungicides that work before inoculation, some that works after inoculation, but we have promising results. I cannot tell you when. Okay, but <laughs> Still I, I, yeah, that would be cool if they that have be, some like. It would be good, good if they have uh, alternatives to the current management. Yeah. And good luck for to find that alternative. Thank you. <laughs>